The most popular type of book to sell on Amazon is a low content paperback. Why? Because they're easy to make, there's no money required, and you don't need to be a real author to even publish one. Now on the surface, while that all sounds really nice, as you can imagine, there's just way too many people out there cutting and pasting the same type of book together. If you run a search on Amazon, you'll get over 60,000 results for the term lined journals. And typically, the only thing separating one book from another is the cover. But don't get me wrong here. If you're already selling these types of books or perhaps you're just getting started, I'm not telling you to stop doing them. Instead, I just wanna show you a smarter way to create low content books by doing something called medium content instead. So what does that even mean? Well, unlike high content, which is you know written pieces like fiction and nonfiction books, medium content books are just like low content, except they require slightly more effort to make. However, you still don't need to be an author or artist to get started, and you definitely don't need to spend any money making them. To understand this better, here's what Amazon says regarding the differences between low content and medium content. A low content book has minimal or no content on the interior pages. These pages are generally repetitive and designed to be filled in by the user. Common examples include notebooks, planners, journals, and other similar works. This does not include activity, puzzle, or coloring books. Now, the most important thing to remember with that is the word repetitive. When you create something like a line journal, for example, that's filled with the exact same page over and over again, that's considered low content by Amazon. And it's actually something they're trying to discourage new sellers from creating. Earlier this year, Amazon released an update saying they're no longer providing free ISBNs for low content books. And if you're not aware of what those are, basically they're the barcodes for your book. And while you're technically not required to have one, there are a few disadvantages to that. So first, without an ISBN, you're not eligible for expanded distribution, a free program that makes your book available to more readers outside of Amazon, such as bookstores and libraries. And also without an ISBN, your listing won't have that look inside feature that a lot of shoppers use before they buy it. It helps them make a purchasing decision. And that feature most likely helps improve your conversion rate. So it is very important. Now, if you wanted to, you can always just buy your own ISBN outside of Amazon by going to a website called bowker.com. However, just be aware they are pretty expensive here. One will cost you $125, or if you buy 10 at once, then you can get them for $30 a piece. This is yet another reason why you should avoid doing repetitive low content. So if you're ready to get started, let's now walk through the three-step process for creating your first medium content book. And we are going to cover a lot in this video, so you may have to watch it more than once to help drill down each individual strategy. Okay, step one. Before anything else, you want to find out what the best-selling books are. To do this, start with this list of medium content ideas, and for each one, look them all up on Amazon. Now, it's probably about a 20 to 30 minute process for each of these looking them up on Amazon, so I'm just going to take one idea now and show you the process so that you can do it for the rest of them. Sound good? Let's do it. Okay, so from that list, I'm just going to use the one um, I like, coloring books and enter that into Amazon here. And we're basically find, trying to find a niche now, right? Trying to find the best selling products. I can see there's 90,000 results for coloring books and that's a problem. So we wanna niche down. We wanna get this down closer to like 50,000. So I could do a space here and see a bunch of different options. You see coloring books for adults, for kids, uh, bulk for teens, girls, Disney. There's a lot of different ways that we can niche down. So let's say I go coloring books for adults, right? And I enter that in, and now we're down to 70,000 results. Okay, so what we can do is we can keep doing this. We can keep niching down. If I do a space again, I see relaxation is the first one, or really the first, like, wow, like seven, eight, nine, wow. And then you come down to coloring books, so I like relaxation. Let's just try it. I can enter that in now, and we're down to 20,000. That's awesome. Um, you know, I can really go down a rabbit hole if I like and keep hitting space, and now I see I can do large print. Animals, Spiral, Disney, Easy. So you can keep doing this. I'm gonna stop right now because this is gonna be an hour long video if I don't. And let's just go with this here. And again, 20,000 search results. I can look through the listings here to see what types of books are out there. And these are books that we can probably end up making as well. Okay, so we started with just coloring books and now we're in a niche that I think will be better than just regular coloring books. But if you didn't catch what I just said there, I possibly said one of the most devastating words any entrepreneur can say when starting a business. I said the word I think, not I know, but I think it will be better. I'm making a point to call this out because when you're looking for your next book idea, you should know for certain that what you're about to get into is either a good or a bad idea. You don't wanna waste your time creating something that there's just no market for, or maybe the competition is too high, or there's just no profit in it. On Amazon, the best way to verify any niche is to analyze the level of demand, 
competition, and potential royalties. We do this by pulling in the estimated sales, reviews, and the percentage of royalties on all products within the particular niche we're looking at. We teach this concept here on our channel, and to help us get the most accurate Amazon data we can, we use the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna try to sell you on anything in this video, but I will be using it to teach you the general process of using data to your advantage. Okay, back to our results page here. Under each product with the extension, you can see the estimated number of monthly and daily sales, revenue, and other things, like the date it first became available, which is actually a really important part of this strategy we're now about to get into. Now, alternatively, you could pull up the extension this way, which shows a lot more information for every product on this page, which you can see is about 48 different books. So now, if you found a niche just like this, here's how to find out whether or not it's a good idea to further explore. Looking at our list here, we can see the average monthly sales is around 500, meaning that these 48 books sell on average of 500 books per month, which is like 16 sales per day. And on Amazon, that's really good. In fact, our indicator of a strong niche is usually around 300. So this definitely passes for high demand. You can also verify that the sales are evenly distributed across the top 10 products, which is something you'll wanna keep an eye out for. The last thing you wanna see is just the top two or three books hogging up all the sales, which thankfully isn't happening here. Now, what about the level of competition? For this, look at the number of reviews, or what Amazon now calls ratings. We could check the average rating number up here at the top, which I'd have to say is a bit higher than I'd like to see. Ideally, this would be under 1,000 or even 500. But also, just keep in mind, it's almost 2023. There's really not too many categories on Amazon that will be under 500 and are also in high demand. It's just the nature of Amazon. It's becoming more and more competitive each year. But that also doesn't mean you can't get into a category like this. It just means you need to further investigate just how competitive it actually is. So in this case, what I like to do now is filter these results to see how many books are selling a lot despite having a low writing number. Okay, so how we can do this is head over to menu and then click filter results. So like I said, we typically look for 300 minimum sales. So I'll come over here to the lowest sales and I could enter 300, but we typically talk about 300 when it comes to private label. When selling books, I think 150 is a great number on the minimum side because that's about five units a day. So I think that's still very strong. Now for reviews, this is how we gauge competition. I wanna see, like I said, all the products that are selling at least 150 monthly sales and they have no more than 100 reviews. So I'm gonna enter that here in the max. What that's gonna tell me is, show me all the products that are selling a lot despite being new or just not that many reviews and competing with these guys with thousands of reviews. So I can enter that in here and click apply changes and that will readjust my results down to eight that we can see down here at the bottom. Okay, so what's great is I can now look at the average monthly sales, daily sales, and then date first available is a column I love to look at because it tells you when they launched their product. So you can see here, a lot of these were launched this year in 2022, or some of them late last year, and they're already doing really well. 16 daily sales, 15, 12, 12. So this is a really good niche for new sellers to get into. Also, what I can do is I can come over here to the price column and click it as well and see different products pricing strategies. So this book, for example, started at $9.99, and then they drop their price all the way down to $6.99 like it is now. This is something we'll talk about later. A lower price will always sell more than a higher price. And I can even confirm that by coming over to this product's monthly sales and seeing just how they grew over time. So they started at 171 sales and then over time they've grown to now, you know, over 300 monthly sales because again, they changed their price. If we just come back to it, you'll see that again. They lowered their price and around that same time, it looks like they lowered it really in July, and if we go to July on the monthly sales graph, wow, yeah, that's when they, they really spiked from you know in the 200s to almost 400s into 300s. So that is the power of low pricing. Again, we'll get into that later. In fact, what we can do is we can look at this top metric up here, average price. So the average price for all eight of these products is just over $6. We're gonna talk about this more later, but that's a really sweet price. And really when we price our book, we're gonna to wanna to be really close to this price and maybe even a little bit lower at the beginning. So now that we know that this niche passes for both high demand and relatively low competition, the last step is to see how much royalties you can potentially make. So with KDP, it's good to know the two types of royalty rates your books are eligible for. If your book is priced between $2.99 and $9.99, you'll qualify for the 70% royalty rate. And if your book is priced below $2.99 or above $9.99, then you qualify for just a 35% royalty rate. 
So for most medium content books, you'll wanna target the 70% royalty rate. As you just saw in the extension, you'll typically sell a lot more books when priced within this range, and that's really important because you wanna start building up your reviews as fast as possible. So when you're looking for a particular niche, check to make sure that the average price is within that range, just like it is here. Now, with all three of these indicators checked off, you'll wanna write these numbers down somewhere and then repeat this exact same process for at least 10 different niches. You can make this into an Excel sheet and compare all your ideas there, or if you're a Jungle Scout user, you can keep track of all of this data within Product Tracker, a tool that helps you organize and compare different product ideas, and unlike Excel, the data constantly refreshes so you only have to do this once. But either way, however you do it, just keep track of your findings and make sure to do it for at least 10 different niches. By the way, if you're getting any value from this video so far, we'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. Okay, moving on to step two creating the interior of the book, as well as the cover. Oftentimes, this is one of the most challenging parts for new sellers, especially if you're not an artist. But like I said earlier, you don't need to be an artist to make a great book. You just need to know a few tricks and be willing to watch a few YouTube videos, like you're doing now. And of course, you could always pay someone on Fiverr or Upwork to make all the designs for you, but I said earlier that you can do this for free, so I'm gonna show you how to create a book without spending a single dollar. The first thing you need to do is choose what size book you're going to create. The best way of doing this is to check what your competitors are doing by visiting their listings and looking at the dimensions listed here. Also, take note of the page count as well. This will help you determine roughly how many pages your book should have. Next, head over to this website and download a template of your cover. Now, I'll be putting this along with all the links I mentioned in this video down in the description. Once here, go ahead and fill in this information and then click Calculate Dimensions and Download Template. Whether you're on a Mac or a PC, open up the zip file and then select either the PNG or the PDF file. Either one works. You also have a README file here, which gives you the instructions on how to use this template. So make sure to check that out. With either the PNG or PDF file open, you'll see a lot going on here. But for now, just pay attention to the section that lists the overall dimensions. In this case, that's around 17 by 11 inches. And this is the size of document you need to create. Now I'm sure you're all aware of canva.com. It's a completely free design software that you can use to create both your cover and the interior pages. Now with Canva opened, up at the top, click the create a design button, then select custom size. Now just make sure this is set to inches and not pixels, and then go ahead and enter those dimensions we just got from the template. Okay, so we're in here in Canva now, and before designing the cover, the one thing I like to do is actually add a new page and add in my competitors images, so their covers. And I already did that here, so I'm just gonna copy it in here. And basically why I do this is because when I'm done or as I'm creating my cover, I'm gonna eventually slot mine in right here so that I can see and even zoom out and say, is mine visually interesting in comparison to theirs? Um, and it's also good for inspiration. So one thing I like to do is I do like this one right here. It's a, you know, it's a minimalist boho coloring book for teens and adults. And I actually already have the listing pulled up here so we can see it as well and see what the cover looks like. It's just super simple. And you can see these graphics right here were probably pulled from Canva or some sort of free editor. At least it looks like it could have been. And I'm gonna use that as inspiration for this video. And again, I'm not gonna really try to do anything pretty here. I'm just gonna show you the concept of how to do this. You do wanna spend a lot more time and be way more creative than I am. So what I'm gonna do here is because that's a boho, it's like minimalistic, I'm gonna go over to the elements here and type in boho, just see what comes up. Now, I could actually sort it by graphics. One thing to note here, guys, I do have the premium version of Canva. So I'm just gonna come over here and go to free. And so I, we just do the free ones. I said you can do this for free. Um, so I wanna show you guys how to do that for, for basically free. So now I'm looking for a background here. I might even type in Boho background. I just wanna get a basic um, image. So I like this or color. So let me go ahead and spread this across the page here and just get that all the way there. And just kind of coming down to check my competitor as well. It's a similar color, it's, it's a boho background apparently. So what I'm gonna do now is that now that we have the background, I need to pull in that template that we just downloaded so we know where to put text and, and images so that we're not hitting certain marks that we're not allowed to be in. So what we can do is go to upload files and then pull in that template that we just looked at earlier. Once that's downloaded, you can pull it in here and put it right over top. So what I'll do is I'll just actually drag it all the way across and you'll see it fits perfectly. And now basically to get rid of it so that we can see what we're working on is I can come over here to the transparency filter and drop it down. 
So if I drop it down all the way to zero, you see our background, but like somewhere in this 30 to 40 range, I, I, I seem to, um, it feels like it works really well. So really quick, let me bring it up to 100 to um, kind of explain something here. This orange or this pink here, these are areas where you're not allowed to be in. So when they're printing their book, you're, you, if you have anything past that line or touching the pink, it's just gonna come up as an error or it won't even let you upload the book. So you wanna make sure you're inside the pink lines here. And also this orange, or I'm sorry, yellow barcode, you don't wanna cover that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start designing the cover. I'm gonna bring it back down to that 40 transparency mark and start adding in elements in text to the cover. So what I could do first is let's maybe just get some ideas here. I can type in just Boho to get, um, get some more ideas. And I'm just gonna do this really simple, guys. So let me grab some design ideas I like. I like these little like blobs. So I'm gonna put it in here. And then one cool thing on Canva is when you find something you like, you can see these magic recommendations will often appear and I click see all to see all the ones that are very similar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add those in here and just do this really fast, guys. Again, I'm not as a designer and maybe we'll pull in a different color or maybe this pink color because we don't have one. And so I'll pull that in here, maybe change the design. Or the, the style a little bit. And so this is the world's worst boho book cover, but now I need to add in some text. So I can just go over here, add a heading, and bring that in here, resize it so it fits within the purple line. So go ahead and do that here. I'm just gonna actually just call it right now, boho, oh gosh, coloring book. Can't write and place that right in the middle or somewhere in the middle there. And then obviously it's not looking good, so I need to go to effects here. You can add in a background, you know, change the color. Maybe we just wanna do, you know, a real simple white background with black text. Um, so I can just go ahead and do that here, resize it. Now we are doing an adult coloring book, remember? So I might just wanna go a Boho adult coloring book. That looks pretty decent. And then you'll see if I actually change the transparency now in the background that you know, we're starting to get somewhere. It's not looking pretty, um, but I'm hopefully just showing you the idea here and how to start with Canva making a free cover. So again, we don't wanna cover this barcode, but we wanna do the same thing that we just did to the cover to the back of the book and maybe add in some text as well. So what I can do now is export this when we're happy with it. And on Canva, what you need to do is you need to download it as a PDF, but the best way of doing that is coming over to PDF print. That will actually be the best and most highest quality of downloading a PDF file that eventually gets thrown into your KDP account. And again, guys, this is super simple. Hopefully you're just getting the idea or the basics behind creating your book with Canva. And these are some tricks to do that. Now we'll need to do the exact same thing, but this time for the interior of your book. So just like the cover, we need to download a template that shows us where the margins are so that we don't go over them. I personally love this website created by a fellow YouTuber, Paul Marles. Again, all links in the video description. After entering your email address, you'll see the full list of available templates. For our coloring book example, we're gonna download this one here, the right page template with bleed. And all bleed means is your images can stretch the full width of the page rather than just being set within a box. Next, head back over to Canva homepage and create a new design. Now, just like our example, if your book has bleed, you wanna type in the template dimensions, not the book dimensions. So instead of eight and a half by 11, it will be slightly larger here. Okay, now that I have this created, I need to upload that template just like we did previously come to upload files, download, and it's right here. And go ahead and drag that over, over, adjust it to fit the canvas, and voila. Okay, so now what I need to do is start adding in some images to this that people can fill in and draw because we're doing a coloring book example. Now, what I found on Canva is if you type in the words line art, you'll find a lot of graphics and you can use the graphics filter here and. Again, I have a premium account, so let me go to just the free ones to show you that this can be done for free. If you see in line art, if you double click, or I'm sorry, click the three dots here, you'll see a lot of indicators um, that are similar. So line art up here in the title, and then sometimes down here, you'll see the word line or drawing or illustration. I found that when you use the word line art, drawing, illustration, you'll find a lot of images like this that are already cut out. They just have an outline over it. And that's what you need if you're doing a coloring book. You don't want anything like this, for example, where it has some color to it already. 
yeah, there are some hacks that you can maybe get rid of that or you can, um, there, there are some ways if you look up on YouTube to eliminate color within any type of image. So if I just type in the word dog, I could actually get this over here and manipulate it in a way to have it just be an outline. It's a little bit harder and I just wanna show you a real fast way of doing it and a little trick that I found is typing in line art. So I'm gonna design just a real quick example here to show you the process and I'm just gonna maybe grab this page here or this graphic here. A popular question we get asked is, can you use these images and resell them as your own? The answer is yes, on Canva you can. In fact, if you have a premium account, you'll get a ton more graphics available to you that you can also use. The biggest thing is making it unique. So even if I just do this, I should be okay, but what I could do as well is start to design it a little bit. So I have an image here, maybe that's my main subject. I'll put it right in the middle there. And let's say I just wanted to design it a little bit more rather than having it just be a one uh, graphic page is maybe I like these flowers, right? I will put them over here in the corner, resize it. So now we have flowers there that someone can draw in. And I'll add another flower, maybe a different flower up here at the top corner. And I'm just trying to make this unique. Um, but either way, you can use these Canva designs in your book that you're making profit off of. And so I like it like that. You know, I could just keep adding more, maybe some mushrooms down here in the corner just to fill up all the corners. Um, maybe you could add a design to the background so they can fill in the design behind the subject. Um, you can just look for that as well. Um, I could also type in a line art boho to get an idea of some boho designs that match our, um, that our brand that we're doing here. So you know, anything would here would work. You know, it doesn't really make sense, but I could add a snowflake up here. That's actually not a good example. So maybe we'll just do another flower at the top left corner here. So you guys see how you can start to do this. This is not, I'm not saying steal my idea here because if you do, I can't imagine you'll get a lot of good reviews. But this is the idea of creating your pages using Canva, using line art as the keyword you use or illustration or drawing just to get started. But again, there are other websites out there that you can source from rather than just using Canva's pre-built designs here. Okay, so after you did your first page like this, I'd highly recommend adding another page and actually skipping it before you do your next design. So this really only applies if you're doing a coloring book like we're doing here. And the reason is because after your first page, the next page will be what's behind it. And as you can imagine, there's probably gonna be some bleed through, especially if you're using markers um, on this coloring book. So I'd recommend skipping it and then doing your next design from here, skipping the page, doing the next design and so on. So you wanna do this for however many pages you have. It might take some time, but just know that this is a free way of doing it. You can do it by yourself. You don't need to hire a designer or, or be an artist yourself. So this is definitely doable. It might just take a few hours to uh, do. And you can always even like go back to your competitor's listings here. And sometimes you can actually just click the book and they have that see inside feature. You can get an idea of what they're doing. So this book right here, it's super basic. It's just, that's a really basic image right there. And you can see other examples here. And they were doing, what were they doing? 392 sales a month. And they just came out this year in 2022 on a really basic book. So you can definitely do this as well. Don't be discouraged if you can't find the, you know, the best graphics out there. You can always design them yourself, hire somebody if you want something more upscale, but just know that it's possible with what you can get for free on canva.com. And then when you're done with all of your designs on all your pages, again, just like the cover, come up to share, download and P df print and that's going to be the best quality that you need to upload it to kdp okay so hopefully by now you're on the right track towards creating your first medium content book now that you have both your book cover and the interior pages ready the next step is to publish it on the kdp platform step three after you register and open up your kdp account you'll see a page just like this where you can either add an ebook paperback or a hardcover because we're doing a paperback we'll click that option Okay, now a lot of these sections are pretty simple and pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just gonna cover the most important sections here that play the biggest factor in your book being discovered in the search results by shoppers. And it all starts with creating your title and subtitle. Now, real quick, do you remember the title of this video? It's the smart way to create KDP books. So the smart way of creating your title is to use the highest volume keywords that your top competitors are already ranking for. We teach this exact same strategy here in our channel because when you use the best keywords in your title, and in this case, also your subtitle, your book will have a much better chance of ranking higher in the search results. So to do this, head over to your competitor's page 
And if you have Jungle Scout, click this icon to run a search for their top keywords. In Jungle Scout, you'll see a list of all their keywords that this competitor is ranking for. It's already sorted by search volume. And as we can see here, this is their strongest keyword phrase. Right away, the word relaxation stands out to me the most. Also, I do see the word teen is showing up quite a few times as well. So what you can do with this information is go back to the cover that you designed in Canva and add these words to your title. So this is really important. Your title needs to be printed on the book itself or the spine of the book. So this is why if you're using keyword research, which I highly recommend for the title and subtitle of your book, is to go back to Canva and redesign your title from there. But first, I'd recommend coming back to this KDP page and drafting it all out here. Maybe we do something like boho coloring book for adults and teen relaxation for the title. And then for the subtitle, we can do something like over 50 minimalist stress relief designs and patterns. Now, because the subtitle doesn't need to be on the cover, you'd only need to go back to Canva and update your new title with this one. So that's the most important step when it comes to keywords, although you still have a description to write. So again, use your competitor's keywords as a guide to writing your description. Below that, you also have a section where you can enter up to seven different keywords. For this, again, you can enter in those top keywords, but also I'd recommend mixing in some keywords that you haven't used yet. These can be either close variations or even keywords that describe your target audience. Next, underneath keywords, this is where you can select up to two different categories. The best way of doing this is by going back to Amazon and pulling up your competitor's page. Scroll down to the bottom and check what categories they're in. You may have to do this for multiple competitors, but essentially you're just looking for the top two categories that make the most sense. And to help you find these categories on the KDP page, simply just click on the link and then the next page will show you a category tree that lets you know exactly where to find your category. These are the most important steps for creating your medium content book and really giving you the best chance to stand out in the search results. Now, hopefully you're able to make some money with this strategy. And if you're looking for more ways to create some additional income, check out this next video of the top nine ways to make money selling on Amazon. Thank you so much for watching this. I'll see you over in the next video. Remember now, oh, I can't say remember. Shoot, I shouldn't point just cause I guess that would be it. No, it's probably that way. And drafting it all out first. First twice, okay.